Hello my fellow scientists, tonight I want to update you on the all iron battery. So we've been working for like a year on iron battery 2.0. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to submit another publication pretty soon, but here's the really, really, really quick version. So here's the basic idea of the all iron battery. You have some graphite. The graphite's going to take electrons from iron and pass them through a load into iron 3 plus. Iron 3 plus becomes iron 2 plus, iron becomes iron 2 plus. Basically everything goes to rust. Then some ion has to pass through a separator to balance the charge. There's the gist. We tried this and we found that it was just really, really slow to give up those electrons. Really high resistance, so we worked really hard to fix that. We found out that if we use a whole bunch of conductive carbon, it produces a sh shorter diffusion distance and much better current, even without necessarily the most optimal chemistry. So we can use a quicker, easier, cheaper chemistry uh, and make up for the deficiencies using a lot of conductive carbon. We made some progress toward that. Here's a 200 milliliter cell. And last year we actually produced a full one liter battery with uh, five of these 200 milliliter cells and it will light up a LED. So we were reasonably happy with that, but we know we can do better. One way we can do better is by making just a better cell design. All right, so to make this chemistry, we're gonna add iron sulfate, iron two sulfate, FeSO4, and grind it as best we can. I'm shooting for a final concentration about two molar but that's really beyond the solubility limit, so we're gonna just do our best. Uh, if you heat the liquid, you can maybe get it to go a little bit better into solution, but we're gonna add sodium hydroxide next, and that crashes it anyway. So now I'm going to macerate the iron oxide hydroxide. It's in a two oxidation state, which you can tell because it looks like in that green color. Next, I'm going to incorporate as best I can uh, 0.4 grams of conductive carbon black that has been ball milled to a fine consistency and then that makes a black paste. I'm going to use this acrylic spacer. I'm going to seal the inside edge to avoid as much leakage as possible and then I'm going to put finely divided iron wool, so steel wool, into that chamber and then pack the void space with that black carbon iron hydroxide paste. Now that process is not perfect but it gets close. I'm going to clean up the edges and then I'm going to seal that to the membrane. Uh, I'm going to use four little dabs here just to get things in place. Put this membrane on the top. I'm going to use sodium polyacrylate but the little particles are a little bit too big so I'm going to try to grind those and it doesn't grind very well so I'm looking for ways to improve that process. Put a little fine layer of the polyacrylate over the top Again, seal that with a second piece of paper and then wet it with deionized water. Let as much of that soak in as I can. It's not as well sealed as I'd like. That's another thing I want to improve, but we'll get back to that. Seal the second layer of acrylic on there. At this point, we have our second chamber. I incorporate a little bit of ferric ammonium citrate into that uh, paste electrolyte and then seal that inside edge again. The ferric ammonium citrate is in the iron 3 state, so now we have mostly iron 2 with about 10% iron 3 for the cathode. That's just to establish the polarity and some soluble iron uh, in that cathode chamber. At that point, we're going to seal the whole thing with another layer of the graphite foil. And we have a battery. Uh, I trim it up as best I can with a pair of scissors. Again, that could have been improved. It would be great if that was uh, pre-cut to size next time. Uh, once that's ready, we're going to charge it. All right, now I'm going to put hook that up to 1 volt. I think probably, again, that should be optimized, maybe 1.2 volts. But once I have charged it, even for a few minutes, it can now discharge. The cell potential on there is only about 70 millivolts, but despite that, it can draw a, several milliamps. This is already, you know, 2, 3 milliamps per milliliter, which is an order of magnitude higher than the bag cell, just because everything is so much better placed. Okay, so that's how I made it. We haven't even started establishing performance for this design. I definitely saw some things I want to improve on how I constructed that cell. There, uh, <laughs> there are severe deficiencies in how it was aligned, how, that, how I cut that membrane. I don't think the sodium polyacrylate between those two layers is at all even. So there's definitely things to work on. We're gonna to try to construct that better. But just as a quick and dirty demonstration of how we've improved the design from a year ago to where we are now, uh, this kind of shows you where we are at. It's much, much simpler. The chemistry is probably inherently lower performance, but 
The form factor with tons of carbon makes up for that. And it's really, really simple, both chemically and construction wise. So I'm, I'm happy with a lot of aspects of it. I think that uh, with a little more work and a little more optimization, we can get it to where it's actually getting close to practical. So I hope you found that interesting. We will see you next week.